Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I would be remiss if I didn't start by thanking our fans uh, for coming out uh, in such a crazy time uh, in 2020 and showing their support. Uh, they were they were definitely felt, and I know not just me, but our entire program and, and our players uh, really, really do appreciate uh, their support. Uh, happy to come away with a win, <laughs> obviously, uh, with – uh, uh, a very depleted roster. I, I think we counted 18 guys uh, that were on the depth chart to start the season, did not play in this game. Uh, we started seven freshmen, started three freshmen and two sophomores on the offensive line with a freshman tailback, uh, started a freshman Mike linebacker, freshman safety, freshman three technique uh, in a bowl game. And uh, I think it was, John told me, I think it was the first time We've ever rushed for 300 and passed for 300 in a bowl game. Uh, finished the season with the second highest uh, scoring offense in school history. Um, and I, I think a couple other superlatives that uh, I'm really proud of. But um, most importantly, proud of our players. Man, uh, what they've been through these last 10 months uh, is indescribable. Absolutely indescribable. And they deserve all the credit uh, in the world uh, for going through what they went through just to get to this point. And we got to this point and they had fun. They played for each other. It wasn't always pretty, certainly. I mean, we, we literally had guys out there that were playing their first snap of college football uh, in the Valero Alamo Bowl. And, um, you know, a lot of, Good thing there wasn't a big crowd because we were coaching a lot on the sideline, yelling at guys to, in terms of their assignment and what to do and uh, so on and so forth. But um, injury update, uh, Tavondre Sweat uh, with a left shoulder sprain, Brennan Schooler with a left ankle sprain, Albert Collins with a shoulder sprain, and obviously, you know, Sam Ellinger with a, a, a shoulder sprain. Uh, he wanted to go back in, the medical staff, uh, would not let him go back in, did not clear him to go back in. But, um, you know, so for those guys to go out too, considering how thin we were and still finish the game the way that we did, I, I just, I, I couldn't be prouder, couldn't be prouder. And um, uh, it's always a good thing to, to end your season with a win, to send these seniors out with a great taste in their mouth. And, you know, start the off season uh, with a lot of positivity uh, and um, a really, really good sign of, of things to come that we're capable of doing. Questions? Go ahead and use the uh, raise hand icon and we'll run through some questions. Start with you, Anwar. Okay, I'll unmute myself. Um, can you just talk about, you know, Casey's uh, performance? And I mean, could you have foreseen something, you know, as dynamic as that? And I know you haven't looked at the tape, but you know, give us your overall on that. And then second, um, when Bijan is cooking the way he is, how do you just resist not just feeding him the rock uh, when he's doing this, you know, so, so many dynamic things? Uh, well, a lot, a lot of it was on the offensive line. Um, and, you know, we, we went, through a bit of a lull there in the second half or in the, the second quarter, I should say, uh, that we were just, you know, trying to jumpstart some things and uh, we're, we're going to rotate our backs. We're going to keep them fresh. I think, you know, Rochon showed that in, in the second half in the fourth quarter with that run being uh, fresh. And, uh, you know, Bijan had some great runs in the second half being fresh. So, uh, you know, that's, that's kind of what we do. And, um, you know, the missed opportunities in the second quarter in the run game uh, weren't necessarily, I, I don't think any tailback, it, it probably wouldn't have mattered uh, who was in the game. And as far as Casey's concerned, yeah, I mean, just really, really proud of him. Uh, we knew at halftime that there was a, a strong possibility that he was going to have to finish the game for us and thought Mike Yersich called a great second half for him. Uh, you know, some max protection. You know, this was a very, very complicated, complex, disruptive defense that we were playing. And I uh, thought Mike 
uh, simplified the game for Casey and, and Casey and his receivers uh, delivered and uh, really, really proud of them. First efficiency guys, let's keep it to one question each. We'll go to Nick next. Yeah, Tom, that's, uh, you know, back to back years, you come in here and have a really dominant performance. Uh, this year you did it with a lot of true freshmen, really young guys. Um, did, did that feel a little bit different just going into the off season, knowing that you played that many young guys, they have a lot of experience and, and maybe you can kind of turn that into something in the next few months. I, I think so. Yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, to see all of these young guys perform the way they did. We didn't play perfect by any stretch. Uh, we, we've got to find a way to defend the pass a little bit better uh, and, and make plays on the ball, on the perimeter, on defense. Uh, we, we've got to find a way to uh, not get so stagnant at, at times offensively. You know, we went a few drives there that uh, that stalled out on us in the second quarter. But uh, other than that, you know, yeah, I mean, I, I think I said it in my opening remarks, you know, uh, the to see that all of these young guys uh, – do what they did and win the game the way that we did convincingly that way uh, definitely I, I think puts a smile on a lot of us coaches on our faces uh, knowing what we're going to be able to work with um, in the off season. Brian go ahead. Tom with with all res due respect to Sam is it is it too simplistic or is it is it correct to say that Bijan Casey DeMarvion, this is the future of Texas football, these guys. Well, yeah, I don't think you, you need all due respect. I, I think that's that's uh, pretty obvious that the, the young guys are the future of, of this program. And, uh, you know, they played really well tonight. Kirk, go ahead. Uh, yeah, Tom, do uh, Hudson and Casey, do they start out dead even, assuming Sam does leave? Or did you see a lot of meaningful action from uh, Casey? Ask ask me again when spring ball starts. I have no idea. Well, what how impressed you? were you? What's that? How impressed were you with Casey's calm and his his arm? Uh, I mean, I mean, I'm, nobody was surprised. I mean, maybe maybe all of you were because we he hasn't played a whole lot, but we we've seen him in practice for three years, so I mean, none of us were surprised. John, hi. Go ahead. Coach, what kind of goes through your mind when you when you hear that that Sam's not going back, especially you, you want your seniors going out right, whether he comes back or not. What goes through your mind then, and and have you talked to him after the game? Did he have anything to say to you? No, we we talked on the sideline for uh, a brief minute. You know, just kind of explaining what happened. I didn't even know, you know, when the injury occurred or or what the mechanism was. Uh, that caused the injury, and uh, I, I told him how proud I, I am of him. I, I, I would assume that he knows that by now. Um, you know how appreciative not only me but this entire program and university is of him and and what he's done. And so what went through my mind was, um, you know, kind of the, the last two games. I mean, it's next guy up, and. Um, you know, Casey delivered and Hudson delivered and uh, everybody around them delivered. And, uh, you know, we were able to, to rally uh, w without our leader in there. And um, that's a, a really, really good sign of a, a cohesive team that uh, knows how to practice and knows how to prepare. Chuck, go ahead. Tom, what kind of evolution have you seen with Bijan from the running back we saw in September and October to the guy we saw against Kansas State and in this game who looked nothing like a freshman. Uh, experience and patience. You know, Stan Drayton has done an excellent job uh, grooming him for these moments late in the year. Uh, you know, I, I've said it ad nauseum. I'll, I'll repeat it again uh, that, you know, when, when, uh, a true freshman comes in in the summertime, especially in a summer like we were, were forced to have, everybody in the country was forced to have. Uh, it's going to take some time uh, for the speed of the game to, to slow down and, and for him uh, to, you know, understand, you know, different fronts, uh, different line movements, blocking schemes, the whole nine. And 
Um, you know, you, the, just the evolution of where he was uh, from training camp until now is is night and day. And uh, you know, I I don't think he's hit a ceiling yet. Uh, he he would be the first to tell you that he's he's still got a lot of work to do. But really, really proud of the way that he has continued to improve and practice and show us in practice. Uh, each and every week, that level of improvement. Chip, go ahead. Tom, what uh, what kind of statement did this game make that you and this coaching staff are the right group to lead the program going forward? Uh, I don't. I don't think any any kind of statement. I think the st- the credit goes to the players. Uh, you know, these players, these young players, did a great job in preparation, and. Um, you know, they went out and executed. Maya, go ahead. Hi, Coach. So now that you've made it through the season and 2020 is almost over, I was wondering what advice would you give to your past self about getting through this year? Oh, um, I don't know. I, I haven't had a chance to even reflect upon that yet, Maya. Um, you know, I, I think this is uh, this was uncharted territory for everybody, and uh, hopefully, we never have to do it again. Uh, but uh, you know, that like I've said before, the, the time for reflection is is after the season when when you know you're you're not in the middle of uh, preparation, you're not in the middle of a game, or ten minutes after the game has ended. Um, you know, we'll we'll have plenty of time to reflect on. Uh, things that we did well and, and things that we need to improve on. Got time for three last ones. Go ahead, Cedric. Yeah, uh, Maya, great, great question. Uh, that, that's deep. Uh, Tom, um, you ne- with all the uh, opt-outs you had before the game, um, you had no idea what you were going to get. And so what was your level of concern in preparation, knowing that you were facing a team that was on a little bit of a hot streak? We, we knew what we were going to get. Um, you know, we, we had full confidence in uh, the guys that played. They practiced really, really well. I, I know it sounds cliched, and I said it in multiple press conferences that we had a great nine days of practice, and I meant it, and it showed tonight. Tom, uh... When, when you learned that it was Sam was done and that was Case's turn, what was your conversation with him like? What did you tell him? And then what did you want to emphasize with uh, Mike about the offense with Casey in it? Uh, Mike's a pro. I, I didn't have to say a whole lot. Uh, you know, he knew we talked at halftime about uh, the, the plays that he felt comfortable calling with Casey. We talked to Casey about the plays that he felt comfortable with as well. Um, and I don't know, what was the first part of your question, Joe? What, what was, what did you tell Casey? Like when you went and told him, Hey, it's you, like, what did you talk to him and emphasize with him? I, there's nothing really dramatic. I mean, just, we smiled. I said, you're up kid. And, uh, I told him that I believed in, in him and his team believed in him and go do you. And he did. Danny, go ahead. Um, Tom, was Denzel an opt-out or was he hurt or why was he not available for you guys today? Uh, medical reasons. Terry, go ahead. Coach, all, all of your uh, backup quarterbacks were ready to play. I mean, they, they came in there looking like uh, they were playing the whole entire season. How surprised was Ben Ballard? And was this uh, you know, part, of the, part of the plan to put him in the last couple of snaps? Well, I think when, when the game got to the point where we knew we, we had it won, uh, we, we were going to play as many people as we could, especially seniors. I know Ben is not one, but um, we, we wanted to get him in and, and uh, make sure that uh, everybody that was available touched the field. Last question, Stephen, go ahead. 
Yeah, Tom, um, four years, four bowl wins. You know, it's, it seems like it's incredibly hard to win four straight games of any time uh, or, or of any kind, let alone, let alone bowl wins. What do you think it is that allows your teams to just really cut it loose and play freely and without these restrictions in the postseason? Well, I think that the grind of the season, you know, the, the urgency of, of preparing each and every week, uh, you know, can, can be a grind. And, um, you know, every now and again, that, that grind uh, will sneak up on you and, and cause you to have a, a bad game. But uh, when, when you have a, a chance to take a deep breath and uh, have some fun uh, with your teammates and, and bond a little bit, and there's, you know, not a whole lot of pressure of a, of a game, you know, in five days, you know, you, you don't turn these games around, you know, every five, five days. And so, uh, it's um, a little bit more relaxed atmosphere, uh, knowing that that you've got time to prepare, and you know the the the, the level of urgency, um, you know, until you get to the last you know few days of, of preparation, uh, it's more about honing in on your fundamentals, improving. You know, these young guys did not have a spring practice, and you know to allow them to. Uh, really hone their individual skills, uh, get again uh, with with the schemes on offense and defense, and and then um, you know not have the uh, like I said the pressure or urgency of of the repetitiveness of of the grind of, of a season. I think is probably the, the really the only way to to best describe it.